Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox Recording here to tell you why you will never see an analog console in my studio. Two things have inspired me to make this video. To this day, I have friends that stop by the studio and say to me, hey man, you've, you've been doing this for a living for a while now. Why don't you have an analog console? And the second and most important reason why I decided to make this video is I see people online who are just starting out that are having trouble with their recordings and mixes um, thinking that adding an analog console to their uh, home studio setup is gonna somehow improve their mixes and recordings. And to be honest with you, it's really not. Now, I just have to say this. I have nothing against analog consoles. Some of my favorite mixers on earth, Chris Lord Algae, Dan Corneff, who I had the opportunity of interning with while I was in college, the guy's a genius. Andy Wallace, use analog consoles exclusively. That's their entire workflow. I have nothing against consoles at all. But at the same time, there are amazing engineers out there like Andrew Sheps, Joey Sturgis, Chad Blake, Ken Andrews, who mix completely in the box, completely within a computer with no analog equipment at all. And the crazy thing is that all of these guys are phenomenal. All of their mixes are awesome. It has nothing to do with whether or not they're using a console. In my opinion, the console really just comes down to personal preference and workflow. And the interesting thing to me is that you have guys like Chad Blake, and Andrew Sheps that used to mix on an analog console and have transitioned to mixing completely within the box. Now keep this in mind, if they wanted to, they could still mix on an analog console, but they choose not to because to them, it just doesn't make sense uh, in today's day and age. And I feel the same way, it's just not convenient. Yes, a console has a sound to it, but so do plugins. And I know there's still this myth out there that plugins don't sound as good as the real thing, but believe me, if you take two different consoles, uh, and compare them, they're gonna sound different. If you pull up a virtual console within your DAW and compare it to an actual console, yes, it's gonna sound different. But again, consoles themselves in the real world, real analog consoles, all sound different from one another. So that point isn't really valid. Now I have to admit, yes, it is nice to have the faders in front of you on an analog console. Um, and also I like the idea that you're forced to commit because recalling a mix on an analog console is a pain in the ass. But for me, the cons far outweigh the pros. Now, just like a lot of other people that are starting out, I used to believe that adding an analog console, adding nice preamps to my setup would improve my recordings and mixes until I actually had the opportunity of doing so. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it was a rude awakening. I realized my recordings and mixes still sucked because I still sucked. And I'm gonna be honest, it was a tough pill to swallow to know that my recordings weren't good, not because of the equipment, but because of me. And the way I finally improved my recordings was through trial and error, educating myself, and just real world experience. Even though this was a tough pill for me to swallow at the time, it was a great lesson for me. I realized that I could achieve great results even at home, even on modest gear. And don't take my word for it, go listen to guys that mix completely in the box. Listen to Andrew Sheps, listen to Joey Sturgis, listen to Ken Andrews. Their productions are phenomenal. And there's not a single soul that would be able to listen to their productions and say, oh, that wasn't mixed on an analog console. You could tell that was mixed in a DAW. Anyone who tells you that is full of shit. You could achieve amazing results with practice and utilizing the right techniques right within your DAW that are just as good as if you were working on an analog console. There are engineers out there that still prefer analog consoles and that's awesome, that's just part of their workflow. Again, take someone like Chris Lord Algae who's been doing it for decades. He's been using that console for decades. He knows the ins and outs of it. He's just super comfortable, super efficient on his console and he gets great results. Again, take a look at someone like Joey Sturgis who mixes completely within Cubase with no analog equipment at all and his results are amazing just as well. So don't ever let the concept of not having a console stop you from achieving great results. In a way, it should be liberating to know that all you need is a DAW, a handful of decent plugins, and you can achieve top-notch results right within your home studio. Now back on the topic again, why you will never see an analog console in my studios, I just don't find it practical. Uh, I'm already achieving the results that I want to achieve. I have used a console in the past. I have used a lot of outboard gear and I found that I get just as good as results right within my Pro Tools rig without any analog equipment at all. Yes, the workflow is a little different, but I enjoy the workflow. I enjoy the fact that my setup is super lean, super minimal, super clean. Uh, if something breaks, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to replace it. Uh, I can have more than one rig. I can have someone working in my B room and working in my A room at the same time with no problems. We can easily send Pro Tools sessions back to one another. Uh, there's no routing. There's no messing around with patching stuff in. And I love it. Honestly, I really love it. And again, don't take my word for it. Do your research. Listen to guys that mix on consoles and then listen to top-notch guys that don't mix on consoles and you will find that all of them sound great in their own way and it has nothing to do with whether or not they're mixing on an analog console. Personally, I can't believe that this myth is still perpetuated in this day and age because people have been mixing in the box successfully for almost 20 years now. As much as I like the idea of having to commit to your mix, recall is a bitch on an analog console. 
The other thing about analog consoles is that they're expensive to maintain, um, especially the large format ones. And your electric bill will be through the roof. I'll have a band sometimes contact me a month later that'll say, oh, raise the background vocals in the second verse of song two. I have to be able to quickly do that. I don't want to have to patch things in and spend half a day recalling all the settings on the console just to make a micro adjustment like that. It just doesn't make sense in today's day and age. Now, if you have the money and having an analog console inspires you, that's a different story, but you absolutely do not need it to achieve great results. Again, do your research. You don't need it. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And don't forget to download my free quick EQ guide that contains all of my EQ settings that I always return to in starting a mix. There is a link below within the video's description. Till next time, happy mixing.